to believe in myself and and to believe in what I'm writing and to, and to speak up for myself and not let anybody else talk for me. The training made me more responsible. Now I can speak up for myself. I did speak with our uh, advisory board of directors. I also uh, talked to some of our executive board uh, members about uh, starting up a public speaking group for our consumers here, and the response was very positive. Uh, what I would tell another director is uh, public speaking is, is very beneficial, especially, I would say, to you know, people with disabilities. Uh, you know, our goal is to have our consumers going out in the community doing public speaking to various organizations, uh, uh, service organizations such as the Lions Clubs, Kiwanis Clubs, different business groups, the Rotary Clubs, uh, to the schools, and to the community in general. I, I, I think we've made a commitment that uh, we want to be more involved in the community, and I think public speaking is one very positive way of, you know, doing that. It takes quite a bit of commitment. I think it starts with an interest. Uh, that commitment, it's, it's not only one hour or two hours uh, uh, every two weeks or uh, per month. That commitment has to be almost on a daily basis, uh, you know, so where, you know, there's encouragement, you know, to, to work on your public speeches. Uh, there's encouragement, uh, you know, to, to keep, keep going with, with the public speaking program. The public speaking training involves uh, three things. One is to uh, meet um, four hours um, once a week, and it could be during any day of the week, Monday through Friday. Um, it involves um, stop people helping out, assisting. It involves, the third thing is involves um, adapting the uh, training towards the people's needs and how to uh, get them involved in public speaking. I, I would like to say three things about self-accuracy. First, it is important to all people. Second, it gives you self-esteem. And lastly, it helps you in making a lot of choices. Thank you for coming today. You write what's on your mind, and then you, and then you, and then you write it down on paper, and then you, and then you practice and practice and practice it until you can say it from your heart and in your soul. I like in the training that everybody have input. I use pictures because I can read. That pictures is the one who's gonna make me remember what I'm gonna say. I think what the hardest is when you stand up and and talk by the microphone. I like to make a speech of honesty, work, and respect. When they first started, their speeches were maybe 10, 20 seconds, maybe one or two sentences. Um, some were very, very shy, um, wouldn't leave their seat, wouldn't stand up. Now they're standing behind the podium. They're um, speaking up to five minutes. Um, I've seen much improvement. Even in their speaking skills, some of the consumers or the speakers um, might not be able to pronunciate a lot of words and you might have a hard time understanding them. And now you find that when you listen to them that you can actually understand the words they're saying. They become more confident. I s uh, there are many things that change in their lives once they become involved with these, the speeches and the training, they become more confident, for example. And they, I see them volunteering 
for committees and not only just being part of a committee they will volunteer to be the chairman and so eventually I can see them becoming leaders hello my name is Schmidberg House I am I, I am here to give the icebreaker speech I am 24 years old I live in care provider in Lakeside, California. Today, I will be talking about my life. Okay, Christopher said his name is Christopher Baringhouse. He's here to give an icebreaker speech, 24 years old. He lives with a care provider <coughs> in Lakeside, California, and today he will be talking about his life. What do you remember such a dope in practice? Gives me very good eye contact with other people. Public speaking is a lot and do with other people. Following your dreams, following your heart. I wanted to speak in a self advocacy conference in a large group out in the community. When you're nervous and you want to learn how to relax is that you do it very quietly for no one can be able to hear you or, 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 or see you when you are sitting down and being introduced. Beth is introducing me. I'm sitting down. I just take a few deep breaths, getting ready, maybe tighten my fists and then let go release all of the tension maybe maybe quietly i want to maybe wiggle my legs a little bit and maybe go like this but don't let anybody see it how i practiced i just went in my room shut my door and i looked in looked in my mirror and i said you can't do it crystal you can't do it crystal and my chores include yeah, we will. washing dishes, dishes. <laughs> taking out trash, yeah, we will. and cleaning the house. We will. I vacuum, yeah, I and I also yeah, I dust, dust yeah. my room. Yeah, what do I do, yeah, I do in my free time? Yeah, we do. On the weekends, yeah, we do. I watch TV, yeah, we get there. and I like yeah, yeah, yeah. to make yeah. floral yeah. baskets. Baskets. Yeah, thank you. I also yeah, yeah. enjoy yeah. eating out. Yeah. My favorite yeah, we will. food yeah. to order we'll is yeah. a hamburger, hamburger, French fries, French fries. And right, you got it. <laughs> Listen to your heart and follow your dreams. You could do anything if you put your mind to it. During the day, I, I think uh, uh, during a certain uh, program hours too, uh, uh, we, we found out that uh, you know too early in the morning uh, transportation might be an issue. So uh, getting everybody here by uh, 10 o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock, going to late afternoon, 2 through 2.30 was, was the ideal time. You know, we, we basically uh, concentrated work on other days. Uh, during a wor uh, normal work week, we'll have about 30 hours of uh, work per week. We basically uh, set aside uh, the Wednesday for the teaching, the training, and we put the work on the other day. So there was no lost work. It just was shifted to some other days. Uh, and I think everybody realized the importance of the educational, you know, importance of, of the training. So uh, and no, work, no money was lost. It was just shifted to other days for training. So. I decided to help with the speaker group because it went hand in hand with the self-advocacy group that I've been working with. People, if they're going to be self-advocates, need to be able to speak out. And this is a wonderful way to encourage development of communicating this is like I said this is my first time I really enjoying this to be with my friends and this is this is really experience for me and I really really 
enjoying it, and I'm glad there is a public speech we can go out in the community. And the motto we've used where we, we uh, have uh, our speeches, the evaluations, the, uh, the opening with a Pledge of Allegiance, the thought of the day, the joke of the day, uh, it, it's, it's used at Toastmasters all over the country, all, all over the world. And uh, I think it's a well-proven method uh, for you know, developing good public speakers. After the training to continue to work with the consumers, the big emphasis is to make sure that you take the time and that you set those meetings and you don't let it fade away because it's very important for the speakers in their lives and how much they've grown with this. But like I could talk to, I could talk to people, individually people, but get it in front of people, I couldn't do it. But now, in the public speaking thing, I can do that. If I can do it, so can you do it. When the night has been too long, <laughs> and the road has been too long, and you think that love is only <laughs> for the lucky and the strong, just remember. He's singing is so good, and we should give Lisa a good hand.